Now, let's talk about the goal then of influence. The goal of God is what? Influence, not imposition. We are not supposed to attack people. You're not supposed to offend people. Do you know the best example I heard of influence is this. When I was in, uh, in high school here in the Bahamas, I had a teacher. Her name was uh, Mrs. Hannah. She was our biology teacher and science teacher. And one day she did an experiment. It was a very terrible experiment, but it worked. She brought a frog to the class, a frog. And then she, we were in the laboratory, and she put one of the flasks on the Bunsen burner. You know what a Bunsen burner is, right? You remember them words, Bunsen burner? That's like the flame. And she filled it with water, and she put it in the Bunsen burner, and it began to bubble. It was hot, boiling. And then she took another flask with water and just rested it next to it. She took the frog that she had and put it in the hot water. The frog, when his body hit the water, leaped out of the water automatically, jumped onto the table. She picked him up again, dropped him in the hot water. The frog jumped out of the water. When that heat hit that body of that frog, he instinctively jumped out of the water, landed on the table, on the desk. And then she took the frog and put him in the nice, cool, flask of water and the frog met it to the bottom began to rise to the top and he swam around happy and then she took the frog in that flask and put it on the Bunsen burner and the frog just kept on swimming joyfully happy and the water keeps getting warm and then hot and the frog didn't even know he just enjoying swimming around and the water what began to boil and the frog was boiled to death never jumped out and there was an example of influence you can attack or you can influence god doesn't want you to be hot water where you burn everybody around you because you're so anointed. He wants you to be so comfortable for them to be with that when they find out who you are, it's too late. And when you find out what you've done to them, they are happy you were there. This is influence. Write this down. The purpose and plan of God was to influence the earth. Kingdoms expand with their culture and the culture permeates everywhere it is and it influences that and colonizes it. So the evidence of colonization is when the place becomes the culture of those who influence it. The kingdom of God is a country. Countries manifest their distinction by their culture. So the ultimate manifestation of a kingdom citizen is a unique culture. When I went to live in Oklahoma to go to school, I went from there to there, you know, from being down. And we say words like bui and yena and dem. This is foreign language to our visitors, of course. Anyhow, after the first year, I began to hear the, the, the language of miles change. You know, we used, to use, we used to call, you know, like a girl in our country in the Bahamas, we call him, uh, we call it the boy Sam, and we call him the woman Mary. And after the second year in college, I said Sam because they didn't understand Psalm. Am I, anyone can identify with this? In other words, I, I ran away and the culture was working on me so slowly, I, I was forced to say Sam because they kept being confused when I say Psalm. 
So the culture gradually worked on me until Sam was normal. Mary was normal. And by the, from, by the time I was there for seven, eight years, Sam was normal. I came back home and my family said, why are you saying Sam? It's Sam. I was cultured in another culture because I was there too long. Since you've been a kingdom citizen, has your language changed? Do you still use foul language? Do you still gossip? Do you still lie? These are language problems. Do you exaggerate? Are you in the culture of heaven where you tell the truth all the time, even if it gets you in trouble, even if it loses you money? What's your language like? The evidence of colonization is culture. And this is God's plan. 